Welcome from wherever you are watching us in Kenya and beyond. This is WTV Sports Center where we discuss some of the top stories in the world of sports. Always a pleasure to be your host. My name is Elijah Mwangi. As usual, if it's Saturday, you know that John Kianda is here with us to let us know what he thinks concerning the performance of the Kenyan team in Beijing in Japan, that is volleyball, and also here in the country. So thank you very much, John, for finding time for us once again. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, moving on to our first story is that Usain Bolt produced perhaps his greatest performance of all by beating Just, Justin Gatlin to retain his world, his, uh, world 100 meters title. Gatlin had looked unbeatable in running 9.77 seconds in his own semi-final. But in the final, Bolt clocked 9.79 seconds while he came in second with 9.80 seconds. I don't know your reaction concerning the 100 meters final. And at one point we, we saw like Gatlin was almost, uh, you know, making it. But then 30 meters to the end, you saying Bolt there's a documentary watched about Usain Bolt. He says if you want to beat him, beat him in the first 40 meters. In the first 40 meters. After 40 meters, he becomes a beast. And that's why he was yeah. being referred to as a cheater. A cheater accelerates at his, as it goes by. His long strides, his coach has stayed with him for quite some time. His name is Glenn Mills. Yeah. And I think Justin Gatlin should not compare himself to Usain Bolt because you look at the headlines after that uh, win for Usain Bolt, like a good overcomes evil because of the doping that uh, ja ja Justin Gatlin has gone through. Yes. But I think the pressure was uh, on uh, Usain Bolt to win because uh, he hasn't been competing so much in the recent past. He was uh, taking some time off, uh, nursing a few injuries here and there as he prepared for the World Athletics uh, Championship. And even the semi-finals, and the uh, semi-finals, I think Usain Bolt didn't do very well because he stumbled mm. in the beginning yes. uh, to go and win. And uh, I think it put so much pressure on him and people doubted what's happening with Usain Bolt because of mm. the false start that he had in the previous World Athletics Championship and uh, the stumble that he had in the semi-finals. So according to me, uh, the coach played a big role in Usain Bolt winning this because he said after that win that uh, he was told by the head coach, yes. you are a champion, you've run so many races, you've won, you've broken the world record, no one is even close to uh, breaking the record. You yourself basically, you're not even close to uh, breaking that record uh, once again. Uh, so the, pres uh, the uh, pressure was on him to win that much and the coach played a big role in him. He told him, relax, stay focused, run for your country and beat, go against the world. Everyone is expecting Gatlin just because he had, so far Gatlin had run uh, the best timing in the world, 100 meters, mm. and is a favorite to win. But a champion is always separated from uh, the rest when it comes to big stages. Form mm. is temporary, class is always permanent, and Usain Bolt showed his class. I'm not saying Gatlin wasn't good, but yes. I think Bolt uh, proved to be, uh, proved to be the best. But, but uh, at that point, perhaps the question that I would uh, really like to ask is, so what will it take to beat Bolt now? Bolt himself said he's going to retire from athletics after the Olympics in 2016. That tells you something. Mm. He's either afraid that he's not going to break his record once again, or he thinks maybe no one can do that. One thing about breaking a record is you'll be paid until someone else breaks that record. Yes. There was a time after he broke the record, 9.58, using Bolt skipped a race mm. in uh, China. I think it was one of the Diamond Leagues, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. He missed 78 million Kenya shillings. 38 million. appearance for, for just making an appearance mm. and uh, the other one for breaking the record. So no one is even close to challenging Usain Bolt. Gatlin could have done that, but I don't think. Maybe but, Johan Black, because yeah. they're being trained by the same coach. Uh, but I was looking at, uh, you know, the times uh, that they clocked. Uh, looking at Gatlin, who uh, recorded 9.77 in the semi-final, but then uh, finals here 9.79, and uh, Bolt, no, that that's Bolt, who had 9.79, and then uh, Gatlin came in second with 9.8. Just a second. As I told you earlier, Bolt had not had competitive races of late. That means they were coming to the final, the man who was on form, and mm. was expected to win was Justin Gatling. Yes. For Usain Bolt to beat him, it means Usain is still the best, despite him not having competitive races mm. in the recent past. 
Well, we've been talking about what's happening in Beijing and uh, the just concluded 100 meters final went with a bolt. But of course, very close or very thin line uh, between Usain Bolt and uh, Justin Gatlin from uh, United States of America because we see 9.79 from Bolt and then Gatlin 9.8. Zero seconds. Now moving on to some other races that took place in the course of the week. Uh, that is uh, 10,000 meters, and uh, in 10,000 meters, uh, Kamoror took uh, silver and Tanui bronze, with uh, Farah's uh, training partner Galeb Rup fading into the fifth. Now the two Kenyans and the teammate Bidan Mushiri attempting to negate Farah's fast finish by pushing the pace early on. So. Uh, Farah from uh, Great Britain uh, took the 10,000 meters, but we had Tanui and Kamorol. Now, is that the best performance that Kenya could have pulled at such a point? Because uh, many people are optimistic 10,000 meters. And even your own analysis last time, you had predicted that 10,000 meters, we may have gold. But uh, we saw a scenario whereby we took silver and bronze. I wasn't sure. And I, I maybe can correct you. I said a marathon. But I think we'll talk about the marathon yes. later. Mm. 10,000 meters, the last time we won, I think it was Kimathi who won it. I stand to be corrected on that. And that mm. was in 2001. Since that time, we've had mixed re uh, reactions, uh, mixed results in yes. the 10,000 meters. But I think for Tanui, uh, Geoffrey Kipsang uh, Kip and Paul Tanui, I think they tried their best mm. and be done. At least we didn't see what we saw in the marathon. Mo Farah has been on fire, has been on form, mm. despite those reports at least trying to link him with the uh, uh, doping and everything. Mm. But I think Mo Farah has maintained consistency. He trains with them mm. regularly at E10. He comes there to train with them. And I think he just knew their tactics. And their tactics at least maybe did not deliver the big stage. But I think Mo Farah after that, he said that uh, he knew the mm. tactics Kenyans had and he had to beat them. He didn't have anyone to set the pace for him. And so he had to give it from the word go and go finish. It was close. If you look yes. at the last leg, 100 meters, it was so close. And I think um, his mental strength helped him to win that race. And I think even in the 5,000 meters, it's going to be difficult for Kenya to win. Okay, now um, talking about uh, the performance of the Kenyan teams in Beijing, and of course uh, that's 10,000 meters. Quite a splendid performance because, you know, silver and bronze from Kamoro and Tanui. That's, uh, of course, we, we salute you for that. Now, something went wrong from the first day in Beijing. <laughs> what many uh, writers have termed as a misfire. Because now, marathon, we Kenyans are known for marathon. But a very unique scenario. What really do you think went wrong by the fact that the first Kenyan to finish was position 22? In 2001, Luki Bet won Kenya. In 2007, yeah, Luki Bet won Kenya a gold medal in the marathon. In 2009, it was Abel Kirui. 2011, mm. Abel Kirui. Mm. We had two. One is a, a Wilson Kipsang is a former marathon record holder, and uh, Dennis Kimeto is the current marathon world record holder. Everyone expected a one-two, but the underdog, who was Mark Korir, is the only one who finished that race. In the Kenyan team, the Kenyan he finished team. in the uh, 22nd in that race, and I think he said one thing: him training with the uh, Kimeto and Kipsang inspired mm. him. He knew he was the underdog, but it inspired him. After he saw these guys are not going to make it, he decided to go it alone. They didn't finish the race. I think uh, our athletes need to get out of a comfort zone. Mm. And this happened in the, uh, in the in the it happened in, in the um, London Marathon. We knew it was a one, two, three for Kenya. Yes. There were mixed results about that. Dennis Kimeto and Wilson Kipsang should get out of the comfort zone. I think they were overconfident. And look at someone who won at that race. It was a 19-year-old Eritrean. That was the first gold medal Eritrea mm. was getting in the World uh, Athletics Championship. And at his age, 19 years, 19 tells years. you how much Kenyans are the likes of Dennis Kimeto, Wilson Kipsang, mm. need to prepare for a battle in the coming years. Yeah, because because some of them, our, our Kenyans yeah. basically, are getting closer to their past peak, I can say so. And this guy is only 19 years. He's mm. going to give Kenya a run for the money, even in the diamond races and the future championship. Mm. Because he's only 19 years, first gold medal for Eritrea. Congratulations to him. Yeah, sure.
And uh, talking about the marathon that went down last Saturday in Beijing, a very unique scenario we must say because for the first time we saw Kenyans pull out and they did not finish. But of course, congratulations in order for Mark Correll for whatever that he did. The position 22 in the world, we may say it wasn't so good, but at least he finished. <laughs> So that's what we are talking about and you can always join this conversation. Tell us what you think concerning the performance of the Kenyan team in Beijing. Remember on Twitter it's a WTVKE or at it's Elijah Mwangi or at it's John Kianda. That is John Kianda, uh, our guest analyst for today. Or you can also send a, a short text message to our SMS line that is 20058. We take a short break at this point but we have a lot lined up for you including Mashemeji Debbie Kokap, as they are calling it, so keep it WTV.